The whole thing, nature is a puppet. You see, we are all puppets, like it or not. You have no free will, no freedom of action. That's the cause of man's sorrow. <coughs> well, I have said my piece. And <laughs> Who's pulling the strings? You, you. Are we just chemical machines? You are, you see, a biological being, like it or not, you see. You know, nature has no use for anything else, you see. Uh, well, we seem to think... Reshuffling of, huh? We seem to think we have You freedom. seem to think that's the unfortunate part, somewhere along the line, you see. I don't even know if there is any such thing as evolution, but we assume and presume that there is. Uh, the human species experienced for the first time this is self-consciousness. Uh, when I use the word self-consciousness, I don't mean uh, in the sense in which you all use the self, that there is an entity center self. Uh, it is just like, you know, the self-starter. Come in, Sunny. Come in. In the car. <laughs> so he, he felt and experienced for the first time the, the separateness from, you see, the nature around him, the life around him. And otherwise, uh, you have to treat the whole of nature as a single unit. And we are not created for any special purpose, the human species, you see. You know, what is that word? Fortuitous concourse of atoms, you know. If, uh, if there is a shortage of atoms anywhere in the universe, uh, the nature will use all these human bodies to maintain its, uh, uh, the energy level somewhere else, you know. But uh, unfortunately, the culture, the society, or whatever you want to call it, superimposed on it what we call thinking, you see, you know. But we have, I don't want to give a talk, we have to ask the fundamental basic question, what thinking is, and why do we think? These are the two important questions which we have to ask. We take it for granted, unfortunate, but nevertheless true, that uh, the thoughts are not spontaneous, they are not self-generated. You see, they always come from outside. And it's not that I have a, a special insight into the human brain, but from what has happened to me, what I have stumbled into, uh, made it possible for me to realize that the human brain is just a reactor and a converter and not a creator, you see. So the thought responds to the stimuli and translates them in terms of your ideas and then feelings, emotions, etc., etc. So it's, it is a... a a unitary movement. You can never separate yourself from the totality of things around you. And what uh, separates you from the totality of things, the nature, or whatever you want to call it, is the thought. What is thought? Are there thoughts? That is my question. Are there thoughts? Let alone, what is thought? What is there is only about thoughts, you see. You know, but no thoughts. But the, we tend to give meaning to things. Yes, that's you can uh, define a thought, but basically there is no such thing as a thought at all. What is there is only about thought, you see. You have no way of separating yourself from thought and looking at thought. You see. I don't know if you ever tried it, you see. So, can you separate yourself from your thought and look at it? You see, the very question that we are asking is absurd because we assume and presume that there are thoughts and that we can separate ourselves from thought and look at it. Why, why, why the hell do you want to indulge in such a frivolity of uh, separating yourself from thought and look at thought? Hmm? Well, my friend Vita will tell me that we do know there are thoughts. And but how, uh, do you, how do you know? How do you know? Yes. Perhaps by from the knowledge thought. that is passed on to us from generation to generation. But we don't care what others say, but what do you have to say? I don't want a definition from you. No. No. But, I don't care what Socrates said, what Jesus said, what Buddha said, or what any philosopher said, or even what scientists say today. You see, fools rush in where angels fear to tread. That is, you no, know, I can hazard an opinion that the quest of these scientists for the fundamental particle is not going to be successful at all, because there is no such thing as a fundamental particle at all. 
because nothing ever was created, nothing ever is disappear, nothing ever is born, nothing ever dies. That's the way the things are functioning. So if you are lucky enough to stumble into a situation where this triangle hold of thought is not there anymore, you will realize, you see what I am saying, you see. It's not an experience, it's not part of my experience in structure. I have not captured anything within the framework of this experience in structure and talking about. It is not something that I can say I know, you see. There is another kind of a knowing, if I may use that word, just the way, you see, the body knows that it is functioning. Hmm? But you and I know the function of the body in a different way and that too is through the help of the knowledge that is given to us by the, the doctors who have observed certain things. And the heart does not know that it is pumping blood, you see. The body does not know that it is alive. The body does not know that it is dead. It has no way of experiencing those two things. So for all practical purposes, uh, death does not exist. You have no way of finding out for yourself and by yourself the fact that you are alive or dead. So I've said a lot of things are now coming. Is it that what you're expressing a thought? That's no, what you think? No, you, no, that's not what I think. This mm -hmm. is not born out of my thinking or it's not out of a logically ascertained premise that I'm talking about. You can brush all this aside and say it's nonsense. Goodbye and good luck to you. <laughs> that's all that I can say. Uh, it seems to me that the, the basis on which we say that there is anything uh, in order to say it at all, you have to use some knowledge or else you can't say anything. There is no need for any, that there is no need for any communication at all, you see. Yeah. So that is why I asked the question at the very beginning, why do we think? See, why do we think? We, there is thinking only when you want to know something. Wanting is thinking. So that's the very beginning. I want to know something about myself. I want to know whether I am alive or dead. You see, that is itself an idiotic question. There's no reason for a living thing to pose that question to itself. Huh? It knows that it is alive. You see, it has no meaning, that kind of a statement. It is a dead thing. Thought is dead, you see. So it's the dead thing that wants to know something about the living. So it can never make the living thing part of the debt structure. So your, uh, the way you want us to know is not what the ordinarily how we know things. You expect us to think in order to know anything we have to be directly in contact, in communication with that now, thing. Now that's a very misleading uh, statement least. you are making because you see we have been brainwashed to believe that there is some way that you can have a living contact with the thing. You see, there is no way you can uh, experience anything, especially the one that is living, through the help of this experiencing structure. You see, the, the experience is born out of the knowledge that is passed on to us. Hmm? The only instruments we have at our disposal is the sensory perceptions. You see, senses do not tell you anything. You see, the stimulus and response is one unitary movement. Hmm? So you cannot say that this is a response to a particular stimulus. Hmm? So the fact that we are talking about, you see, this activity which is a unitary movement in terms of uh, stimulus and response becomes possible only through the help of the knowledge that is passed on to us. Probably, you see, if you go to a laboratory, the, the physician will, you see, knock something here and see, see because of this that you see, you have this particular response, you see, to the stimulus. But that's not going to be of much help to us except to communicate to ourselves and communicate to somebody through this knowledge that is given to us, you see. So, are there any responses to this? Are there any stimuli? I even question that, you see. How do we know that this is a response to that stimuli? The eyes are focused on that. It doesn't say that it is a bright light. You see that this is responding to that light. It is one unitary movement, whatever is there is reflecting, hmm? reflecting what is there. So to put it this way also is misleading because you think that I am 
saying all these things out of the the experience I have, which is not the the experience that we all experience through the help of this knowledge. It is only a reflection. Hmm? Uh, I, I put these things in this way only to give you a feel that uh, there, if you and I were functioning in exactly the same way, and you are also functioning in exactly the same way, there is nothing that uh, you can do to be, say, in, the, in this way I am functioning. That is the way every human body is functioning. And human body is not separate from the light there. I am not uh, this, talking in terms of the Veda think sense. There is no way you can separate yourself from that. Hmm? What separates you from that and what makes me say all those things is to use the knowledge that is given to me and you see to, to explain those things, emphasizing that this need to separate yourself from that and maintain the continuity of it is, uh, is meaningless, is useless. Unless we want to maintain the, the, the demand for the continuity of the continuity of the knowledge and the demand can be fulfilled only through this repetitive process of applying the knowledge and experiencing the same thing. So there is no such thing as a new experience at all. <coughs> so, I have said a lot. The, huh? the experiencing structure is built, in, built into us, yes. the rest Wh of us. Anyway. Where is it? Where is that? That's, I said at the very beginning, it, it is uh, responding to the stimuli. All that comes from outside, you see. The, the, the culture, the society, or uh, whatever you want to call it, you see. Uh, I, I want to use the word for want of a more adequate uh, expression, the world mind. You see, the world mind means the totality of man's experiences, thoughts, and feelings. And we are, that is passed on from generation to generation. And I maintain, I have no way I can, you see, make this definitive statement that it is also transmitted from generation to generation through the genes. But the world mind I am talking about has created you and me hmm, for the sole purpose and main purpose of maintaining its status quo. That's all it is interested in. So without the use of that knowledge, the world mind, you have no way of experiencing your separateness from that and the very fact that you are alive is also cannot be experienced without the help of that. Your existence as you know yourself, as you experience yourself is possible only through the help of that. Just the way I have to feed myself to have energy to, to keep this physical body going, you have to use that, the word mind, to maintain your continuity as, you see, a separate entity. Hmm? But those of us who are familiar with philosophy, what you're saying is quite familiar in the form of skepticism. Uh, if knowledge is not the way we know about anything, mm -hmm. and if direct acquaintance we have no, no possibility... No no, 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 I'm sorry, I said knowledge is the only way and there is no other way. And even and to bother about experiencing the reality of things sure. without the help of this knowledge, is an exercise in futility. the word I picked up, total futility. <laughs> All right. the, the third thing we picked up yes. from what you were saying is, yes. the, uh, from our acquaintance with philosophy, we know that uh, any skepticism is based on certain presuppositions, and we're used to questioning those presuppositions. Now we come back to you and say, how do you know that thought is doing this operating? Is that a piece of knowledge? No. In which yes, case, we are back in square number the, one. The question, how do you know, how demands to know. You see, otherwise you won't ask the question. How implies that you want to know, and whereas I am emphasizing that your attempt to understand the reality of anything and experience anything outside the field of that knowledge is an exercise in futility. So, don't even bother about trying to find out the reality of anything. See, we have to take it for granted. The reality that is uh, uh, imposed on us by culture. You see, otherwise I have no way of functioning in this world sanely and intelligently. So, I accept the reality of the world as it is imposed on me for purposes of communication. And that communication is only simple things, as where can I get the water, how can I get to this place, island, uh, whatever is your number. These are the only questions that I am interested in, but not ask the questions about reality, the ultimate reality and so on and so forth.
there is no how that's all the time saying the very fact that we are asking the question how to live is the one that has created the problem and the 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 problem is the the human values that are imposed on us you see they are false hmm? so it has falsified you see, our lives but we are not ready to brush them all aside you see there is no way you can do it there that is possible you think only through the help of a new mode of thinking so i am not suggesting that there is uh, uh, no other way of thinking you see other than the way we are thinking and that thinking is the one that has created the problems and through that you cannot uh, resolve this problem at all see, thinking has, it can only create the problems and it cannot help us to solve the problems and because we have tremendous faith in our thinking and that thinking has helped us to create everything hmm? we still have a tremendous faith in that and we hope that through the help of that we will be able to solve the problems that thinking has created but isn't thinking a natural phenomenon i mean you seem to say that it's not i mean is it not a physiological thing a property of the brain that it no. thinks that's all the time saying it's not the property not of the problem. brain the brain is only a reactor and a, a, not a creator so it's not the, a thinker I mean, it is not, a, not there is no thinking at all the brain is not involved in thinking at all is another thing you will be surprised what after all is man man is a memory you see we don't still have the answers for the question what part these neurons play see in in memory and uh, uh, what memory is I, the other day i was discussing with a neurosurgeon and uh, he said how you have stumbled into this uh, what you are talking about is something extraordinary because we are now we have now more or less come to a tentative conclusion that uh, every sense has a different memory you see so the eye has a memory of its own somewhere the, the listening mechanism has uh, see, a memory of its own and there is no such thing as a totality you see of the memory and brain is not interested in translating any of those sensations for the purposes of maintaining its status quo you see so all experiences which we consider to be extraordinary the bliss the the the, the beatitude the love the compassion are a menace for this body because it is not interested in that it is throwing them all out you see that is the reason why there is pain see when once you have an extraordinary experience a pleasurable feeling and that demands the permanence you see the demand for the permanence is something which the nervous system cannot take it so what we call pleasure is pain for the body as far as the body or its responses are concerned both are the same whether it is pleasure or pain but the moment you translate it into a particular sensation as a pleasurable sensation the demand to make it last longer goes with it so it is trying to throw out so what you call pleasure is turned into pain by you and it is you see something that the body is trying to throw out you see it is not interested in enjoying any of these pleasurable sensations at all but then when the person is born when the organism is born born are you saying that the brain will not think at all and only the society puts in the values it all depends upon you see what think. you mean by thinking i think even animals yeah. do a sort of yeah. thinking in the sense that the uh, the dog knows uh, that you see you are the master you are not the master the dog knows its way back home you see that is what you want to call it thinking you see is altogether a different thing but what you mean by thinking is to use thoughts put in by the society culture or whatever you want to call to achieve certain goals you see so you place the so called uh, spiritual goals on a higher level so you're thinking about purpose you're talking about achieving a goal achieving a goal. it doesn't matter what the goal is happiness you see we are not concerned about god the truth reality enlightenment and all that stuff you see we can brush that all aside but everybody whether he is here or in india or in america or in australia god knows uh, russia is only interested in one thing that is happiness without even one moment of ha- unhappiness pleasure without one moment of pain that's what everybody wants and so our god enlightenment you see all that stuff is the ultimate pleasure you see placed before us as a goal 
and the instrument which you are using to achieve your so called uh, spiritual goals uh, permanent happiness mm -hmm. permanent bliss eternal happiness god knows what is the same instrument that everybody is even the thief there in the prison is using exactly the same instrument to get out of that prison the one which you are using to achieve your spiritual goal it's matter you see thought is matter so all your spiritual goals are materialistic you see when you go to a temple or church what do you do you see you ask uh, uh, your prayers what are your prayers uh, you want this you want that you want uh, material goods if you don't want material goods you want spiritual goods if you don't want spiritual goods uh, some um, eternal goods and god are you saying this is a uh, a survival mechanism that has gone in the wrong this direction survival mechanism that is necessary for the survival of this body is already there you don't have to do a thing about it then why is it there why is the demand there the demand is introduced by culture that's all that i'm pointing out it's the tragedy of man why it occurred is, is an idiotic question which we ask why it occurred this self consciousness or separateness from the totality of life around is is a meaningless question it it has is it is there you see it is that that is responsible for my you see, misery you know sorry no uh, i'm giving a lecture i, I have to go back to school all right we go back to philosophers it. have philo have is sir well as may i ask you all you are all philosophers <laughs> you are all philosophers square one says we we are all philosophers <laughs> you see i i wanted to be one Yeah. I'm, I'm a dropout now. <laughs> Square one says. <laughs> no, no. You see, the, the philosophy has nothing to tell us about anything. Unfortunately, but we want it to get out, out us, of philosophy. It offers us no to guidelines to improve our lives, to make our lives better. It only helps us to, you see, use that instrument, sharpen that instrument. Hmm? So you have to produce That's, philosophers like we you. We are used to calling it intellectual masturbation. Uh, 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 we can find out some other refined uh, <laughs> But with our square number one says, listen. When you started talking about, you put. We thought we were uh, in a certain game playing called knowledge game. You asked us whether how do you know whether there are such things as thoughts. That's the initial question. If There are such things as thoughts. So the first question, then, do you know whether there are such things as thoughts? In which case, of course, we wonder if we knew, then uh, we would be doubtful. Then, if you came and gave some explanation about how we know or didn't know anything about it, then it what looks like we is can a... turn the question around and so ask, "How do you know?" And I know that is the question that you see. I have to face uh, ultimately. You see, so you how do you know? The, so I am telling you. Yeah. that that question wouldn't be there if you see you got the hang of it all you see the fact that you are still throwing that question at me implies that you see i have wasted my breath yeah. you see not yeah. that no no listen the problem is uh, no 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 it's well, not my problem to get out of that game but no 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 I, I, you see listen difficulty. my problem is it's not a problem <laughs> how i stumbled into it is something which i myself don't know you see that is my problem it's not that i cannot communicate but there is nothing to be there's the reason why i'm lately using this peanuts you see very interesting how it happened why it happened when it happened i try to answer all those questions and i forgot the last question you asked has anything happened to you see so has anything happened i really don't know really don't know i have no way so that's the reason why i cannot uh, you see <coughs> Uh, communicate anything to anybody because this is not within the field of the experiencing structure at all you know if it were it would be like any other experience you see the the dialogue is becoming so impossible for just this reason we think you are playing our game of knowledge and you are telling us knowledge is a disease and we are asking you how do you know that it says simply to summarize the whole discussion summarize it said then we would uh, and we don't know what's going on in other words there's a complete blockage of communication between us folks philosophers and you yeah, that's bound to be there you see because there is no way we can communicate with anybody unless you have a reference point there that's the you problem see, the you reference point is very you important seem, you, you seem to come out to say some things and we translate that as part of our game of knowledge yes and 
If you deny that, then we don't know what you're saying, and nor do you know what we are saying. We can say, nice meeting you all, and goodbye. <laughs> and see, <laughs> nice we, lunch. No, yeah. I'm not... How do we get us out of this disease? It's if not my interest. It is of knowledge. See, I am not here to instruct you. I am not here to uh, entertain you. I am not here to enlighten you. I am not here to suggest other modes of thinking. You see, uh, I have no Ill I have no illusion that you see this dialogue uh, is, is going to be of any help to anybody. You see, you know, nor is it you see an intellectual dialogue. Uh, we sit here and discuss whether the chair is still there in the room or not. Go out and discuss for hours and hours. You see, that, that, that has no meaning. You see. But do you feel Nobody? the need to tell this to no, people? No, I don't even have the impetus to talk to express myself. You see, this this is a. Uh, uh, see, I gave the, the simile of a machine gun here, you see. A machine gun, this is a self-activated machine gun like the this uh, voice-activated tape recorder I have, you see. So any movement, you see, of thought anywhere around, it just shoots down. Its interest is not, you see, to shoot it with the, for the reason or purpose of that something extraordinary will uh, happen as a result of this shooting. The, the machine gun is not even conscious of the fact that it is activated by the movement that is there around it and then it's shooting at random. It seems to make sense that we understand you. I feel like you there's haven't something understood intuitive. Anything. I feel like, no, I really do. I feel like there is there's no such thing intuitive that's there is happening. No, oh my, there is no such thing as art of listening, art of not seeing, listening. no listening. Why, why does what you say make sense sometimes? It seems to. The op, huh? We can talk about it for hours. You I know can we do always a, do. You can do a better job than I can ever hope to. <laughs> you see, you are educated. I am not. I am an illiterate uh, village no, bunker. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to ask you. Yes, sir. Do you think, how do you define life? Because you're defining non-life, therefore there has to be a life, right? So how do you define it? What is the point in capturing something living within the framework of a deck structure and define it? But you are undefining it, by the undefining it, you what are defining purpose? it. Why do you want to define life? What, because why do you want not to define it? But we you, all, you're we, talking about knowledge. We are all defining life all the time. You, you mean, see. you want to... How to through. live, you see. I don't know a thing about life. The life you, never asks the question I said in the very beginning, is, Am I alive or dead? You see, see, if you asked me the question, are you alive? I would say, certainly I'm alive because of all these definitions, because of all the information that is given to me by the doctors, you see. And you, see, because you are sitting here, you are talking, you are responding to the stimuli, you are doing all kinds of things. So you are very much alive. I'm good, I'm delighted that I'm alive. But the fact that I am alive is very difficult for me to... to experience that. What, what is that, you see? What, what is life? I really don't know. It is expressing itself. The, the, the expression of life is energy. You are the expression of life. I am the expression of life. The, the mosquito, if there is, that is the expression of life. Everything that is there around is the expression of the same life. See, there is an integral unity, but unfortunately we separate ourselves and we have given to ourselves the tremendous um, uh, idea that we are quite different, placed ourselves on the top of the whole creation, which we are not. We are nothing in the scheme of things. You are no more important. Aye. All of us, all these human bodies will be used by nature because it needs this energy somewhere else, you see. If not cancer, if not AIDS, there will be something else, it will wipe us all out. You can have any number of doctors in this world. Okay. They are not going to do it. It's not a pessimistic... Uh, you see, the energy level, you see, you are no more important in the scheme of things, but through our yes, thinking we are made to believe that we are something extraordinary, that we have souls, that we are... Got soul, Eugene, you see, I think that life. the thought that you presuppose that people have, I didn't say that there was importance in life, I know that. The fact that because you want know to know... Because I know it's a process. The fact that you want to know <coughs> something about life, Sure. Implies that, you see. And all that you're doing, it, you want to know too. I have no research. way of knowing. I don't even ask that question. See it that is living all the time. I think the difficulty is becoming more and more clear. Okay. Yes. That is, whatever you say, sometimes we seem to understand, as Jean was saying. And sometimes we don't, we agree with you. 
one way or the other, we are able to put it in some kind of structure and would we'll come back to dialogue with you from that structure and you say, you're not we, in that structure. We have decided, <laughs> we have decided, sir, at the very beginning and in the middle and probably we will come to the same conclusion at the end. If there is a beginning, if there is an end, Eugene, that there is no that? way we, <laughs> you can, uh, you and I can establish any contact on any level and I go one step further and say, there is no need for us to do that. Would you say that our bodies are reactors? The brain, I said. No. You see, first of all, you know, uh, the, the division of that unit, <laughs> if I may call it, which is not separate from, you see, the, the whole nature, does not divide itself into brain, into cells, into heart, mm -hmm. you see, or uh, all those divisions. It's for the doctor, you see, to localize, you see, uh, a particular part of the body to understand, to know more and more about it. Otherwise, you see, you will be surprised that, you see, every cell in the body uh, see, has a memory of its own now, you see. So, its interest is survival. Hmm? So, it knows, he will ask me the question, it knows that its survival depends upon the survival of the cell next to it, you see. That's the reason why there is a cooperation. Our phony culture says that you must love your neighbor, that you see, the love neighbor as thyself, that cooperation is extraordinary, something we should all cooperate with everybody, and that's all phony baloney. So, but here it knows in its own way, and that knowing is only for the survival. It is selfish to its very core. The unfortunate situation we find ourselves in is the creation of some selfless, you see, thing there, out there. So it is that that is responsible for the misery, but not the selfishness that is very essential for its survival. This selfishness, which is part and parcel of the living unit here, cannot harm anything. I have a question. Yes. You say that you're not quite sure about evolution. Therefore, the other source we could be, we would be, we would be created. Either way. So you mean that there is a creator if there is no evolution? There is no creator. No, no, that's the logical thinking has to. That's what I said at the very beginning. There are no beginnings, there are no ends. Nothing is ever created, so nothing will ever die. So, the, you see, what has created this problem for us is the thinking that has created the space and time. You see, it has created time. Thought is time. So the moment you see, you fix a point here, you create another point. So the space, the span of space is created by thought. So you, you have to invent a creator. The logical thinking cannot accept that anything and everything and the whole thing around us can be a causal. So it's a projection of our own thinking that there must be a creator, you see. That, that is the problem of these scientists also today. See, the Big Bang theory they are talking about, the fundamental particle that they are talking about, they are not going to find out, you see. It's going on and on and on and on because there is no way you can capture that. The more you find out, it's useful, you see. You can get your doctorates and your Nobel laureates. And that's all that is uh, the usefulness of all these scientists because we admire the scientists and Think of pure science as something extraordinary because it has given us all this, Fine, the technology. We're not going to capture it. That implies that it does exist. Maybe we're not capturing, but... If you don't mm -hmm. capture, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. That does not... An experience that cannot be experienced by you, there is no experience other than what you experience. So there must be a point here. That point is the thought, and in even, relationship even with that... for the assertion of the existence of anything. Anything. So you Why do you talk about the unitary movement of life, then, knowing that our thought structure yeah. won't allow us to you have think to, about something? You have thing. to fight, you have to stay miserable. So, <laughs> there is no way out. I think... Uh, uh, <laughs> Sorry. No. Uh, I'm on your side. <laughs> <laughs> when you said earlier that nature is something that uses... Us, human beings. we allow ourselves... Then nature what? Is a, has a purpose then? No, 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 it, it may not. You see, if it has, we don't know. It may not have any purpose. But because of this demand to create a purpose, you see, an origin of everything, we mess up things. You see, the more we understand nature, the more 
we discover the loss of nature, the more dangerous we have become, you see. You may say that there is a tremendous progress in the world. I give this uh, simile. I have known the United States for 40 years. First time I came here in 1949, if I remember right. It took almost 24 hours. And then, you see, 18 hours, 12 hours, 6 hours, 3 and a half hours. If hypersonic planes are put into operation, we'll be able to do it in one and a half hours. Right. <laughs> so then what? You see, how many planes we use to destroy life and property? So you call this progress? I don't call this progress. I, why do you take advantage of this? Do you want me to go back to the bullock cart age of my ancestors? Even I used to use the bullock cart in the village where I grew. So whatever is available there, I'm using. You see, but I don't consider this extraordinarily um, wonderful world we are living in. There is a tremendous progress here. Tremendous progress, there is no doubt here, but progressively we are moving in the direction of wiping out everything, you know. So that's why I have no respect for human they're race. They do, they're not existing anyway. They're no real. There is no reality. If so there's no reality, you know, that no solves reality. the problem. So it's not simple. You can't say there's no reality, you know. Come on. So on, the, on the one hand... <laughs> there is no reality. Like, it's an intellectual concept, you can say. It's just a very dangerous... You know, it's a very... You know, the consequences... The consequences of that situation are tremendous, you see. You know, I was telling this friend, you see, the other day. You see, it's the pressure movement is knocked off, everything goes. Somebody was discussing with me jealousy. Look here, buddy, you see, if jealousy goes, you know, the thing that is responsible for jealousy goes. There can't be any sex afterwards, there can't be any woman, there can't be anything else. Along with it, everything goes. It's too dangerous. Don't play with all these games, just forget it. And live in misery and die in misery. <laughs> Um, you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you didn't get where you are by listening to anybody. I'm sorry, I own nothing to you. Well, the point. I own nothing to anybody. What is the correct way? The American, I own nothing to anybody in this world. You may feel that you say I'm making a, a meaningless assertion. I did see many people. You say I talked to many people. Nobody ever helped me. Not that you see I have. Uh, uh, um, I have gotten is that I have gotten what I really wanted in my life. You see, the hunger for finding out things for myself and by self was never satisfied. It burnt itself out. That's all. I have stumbled into a situation despite all those people who tried to put me on, you see, the wrong track. You see, there is a cake here. Mm, don't bring in your socialism, capitalism. Why not? <laughs> You're prejudicing the case before no, you make it. <laughs> there is a cake here. You see? The cake's too small. You have to fight for your share in the cake. The society, the culture tells you we are going to educate you to fight. How to fight will teach you. If you want a larger piece in the cake, you have to fight. Tread on the toes of everybody. Even if you want a small piece, you have to No, if you say, I am satisfied with small fees and feel hungry and die hungry, it's too bad. <laughs> too bad. Don't make a virtue of your poverty. No. You have to fight for your share in this world. So it is your responsibility, you see, if you want to call it a responsibility. You see, to give him a tool, you see, but it's... And the rest is brainwashing, is that what rest you're saying? Is brainwashing. Is brainwashing. We have been fed on this bunk for centuries. If the diet were to be sh uh, changed, we would all die of starvation tomorrow. But that, that doesn't apply to cells. They, they cooperate with the cell beside each cell. They are selfish to the very core. But and you, you, have, you have placed before mankind the idea of a selfless society. Where is the selfless society? It is that that is perpetuating you see, this selfishness, that's what I'm pointing out. Tomorrow you are going to be a selfless man, for whatever reason. So until then you will remain a selfish man. Tomorrow, until then, you will remain selfish. So when tomorrow arrives, the day after tomorrow, and the Indians are very clever to talk of next life, you see, I don't know, 84 million lives, you see, how to go through. <laughs> the, the, the Indians knew very well, they did not promise enlightenment, you see, in this life, you have to go through, you know, several <laughs> lives. <laughs> Here all these people, the jokers in the marketplace, you know, each one trying for a piece <laughs> in the business, they offer you, you see, here and now. There is no now, sir, where is now here? Here and now, this moment. What is it that they are talking about? This is the now, you tell me something about now. There is no present at all. Forget about the future. Here is the now. Tell me something about it. I'm not your teacher. You please tell me what is this now? The now, the eternal, here and now, this moment. 
living from moment to moment. It's a joke, great big joke. You see, it's a self speech, living from moment to moment. The mind cannot live from moment to moment. It's not interested. The body is living from moment to moment because it is not thinking in terms of permanence. It knows, quote and unquote, that this is immortal, not in the sense in which you use the word immortality. There is no depth to it, you see. It, it may not remain in this shape. It is no consolation to my wife or husband when this is reduced to ashes or, you see, <coughs> becomes a food feast for the, the worms or, you see, the vultures. So somewhere it is no consolation. But how can you experience death? Death can never be experienced. Just the way, you see, life cannot be experienced. The experiencing structure will not be there to experience your own death, you see, or the death of others. The condition of a stiff, the condition of that body, you see, is described in, through the help of that word, it's dead, you see. So there is life, you can't say it is dead, it is not responding to the stimuli, but millions and millions of, you see, germs are making a living on that, you see, it is giving continuity to life. So this is not interested in thinking in terms of, you see, one year or ten years, if there is a confrontation of danger of extinction of this body, everything that is available see, within this framework of the body and around this body is thrown into the situation and it fights until the last and if it survives, the next moment is guaranteed for it. So it lives from moment to moment, you see, the body. But the mind that is interested in continuity, permanence, can talk of living from moment to moment, you see, and make a business out of it, but there is no such thing as living from moment to moment in that area. It is just not possible. If it is possible, good luck. So there is no place for values in education? I don't know. I'm not a... You are a teacher? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you teach? You teach him. What do you teach him, I may ask? Uh, it's mathematics, it's com computer, mathematics computer applications. Is there, is there number two without number one? Is there number two without number one? You see, mathematics ultimately ends up in mysticism. You see. You know. <laughs> you said that, that you cannot experience your own death. That's it's because we you don't know. You no, really something that you no, don't no. know. The experiencing structure that is there now yeah, has to come to an end before what you call death can take place. What you call, I am qualifying that, you see, clinical death. So even the death of your own dear and near one, that is not the death that you are experiencing, is what I said, you see, you give a name to that and call it, you see, the person is dead, mm -hmm. because... Yeah. The, it's in a different state. No, no, because you see that death has created a void in your life and there is no way you can carry on, maintain the same relationship with that cause. So you call it to dead and dispose it off, you see, for our own reasons we dispose it off, you see, it's otherwise it stinks, a saint or a sinner, it goes exactly the same way. It seems to come back to the... Point. experiencing structure. There's there's the experiencing structure and then there is that which is not. And is that, it, where is that? I am asking you. Well, question. that was that isn't clear because I said it was built in. You, can, you, said, you, you, yes. see, you are the one to answer, not what others are saying. Right. How do you experience a thing? Tell me. Well, as, as far as... So you are repeating, just throwing words at me. It's a mechanical thing. You see, that's all that is going on there. What is put in there is coming out of you. Just the way I am operating here. I'm a... You see... It's, uh, Something, you see, you are throwing the balls, you are getting it back, that's all. It's a puppet here. I am saying that we are all, you see, puppets for the universe, for the nature. But people well, don't well, want but, to but resent but because they, don't, they cannot imagine that they are a puppet. It goes against everything that they no, believe even, in. Even if we are they, puppets. So they don't listen. No, no, because you see, you believe in the freedom of action. Where is the freedom of action there for you, you please tell me? I you know. have to use those thoughts which yeah. are not yours. Yeah. They yeah. are not mine, probably they are yours. It's I not. don't have any thought which I can call my own. Well, see, for me, so since I don't have any thoughts which I can call my own, I don't have any experiences which I can call my own. Um, just, you see, a tape recorder, whatever is put in there comes out. It's a computer. It's a robot. Sorry, you may not like it. You may feel yeah. proud that you have invented the robot. You see, I was saying, the robots can, you see, discuss your problems in the hospital. Hmm? No, no, they see, can communicate to the doctor, you see the problem, get the, you see the prescription, feed, they change your clothes, they give you bath, they do everything. I, I made some ridiculous, somebody was upset, you see. You can have even, you see, a live-in lover, 
<laughs> robot lover. <laughs> going too Any far fantasies you, you want to satisfy <laughs> and stamina? <laughs> you, you have to order that kind of a robot. I'm sorry, but you don't want to accept the fact that we are all computers machines. We are all monkeys, imitate monkeys. Every, I will, I, I you, you think you are different? Everything you are doing, every gesture of yours, every word of yours, every expression of yours is taught by somebody. What is so marvelous about you? I don't say anything. Maybe not. I did not descend from heaven, you see, with all these qualities. Yeah. I learned everything. Everybody taught me. Huh? I may have added something more, you see. I may not even be conscious of the fact that I pick up all those things from different uh, situations in life, different <laughs> ways, you see. You are not even conscious of the fact how this sponge is picking up all those things. Now they say the genes, you see, decide, it's, uh, it's a language, you see, not alone the capacity to learn the language. I don't know, I'm not competent enough to say that there seems to be some uh, something to what they are saying. You move, you see, in the direction and put yourself in a place where, you see, the genes can bloom. Automatic, you see. So where is the freedom of action for you? There is no freedom of action, there is no free will. I'm not talking of the funny fatalistic philosophy of India. You don't have any freedom of action there. Like it or not? It's not clear that, that we don't. You yes. have? Tell me. No, I'm not saying that. You may I have do, freedom of action, you see, to come here or not. Even there, I don't think how much of a freedom of action you have. I really don't know. I don't have any fear. Every time I come here, I have to come and eat Naran Bhutti's food. <laughs> this time I asked these friends, you see, can you please come and tape it out? You see, I want to put it across something, you know, and then finish. Yes, sir. Why well, you may very well ask the me. The question is, what you're putting across? That's our square number one question. <laughs> I said uh, at the very beginning, <laughs> this is like, you see, some labor that is going on here, some, yes. <laughs> I know, what do you call that uh, woman who comes and delivers the babies? Midwife. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how qualified you are, but yeah, you are not. We try. You have the wrong training. <laughs> what? The, the result of it will most probably be a stillborn child. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> probably. And yeah. I, won't, I won't consider a stillborn child any it's better still something, than a... <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a phenomenal thing. <laughs> something. A stillborn child. Child no, is a commodity they're, they're, you can look at. No, it. it's very much alive. Lately, I've been telling people you will be useful to nature, dead than alive. <laughs> More useful. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. Yeah. yeah. I'm uh, not joking. I'm ready <laughs> to place myself at the disposal of nature at any time. Yes, yes, sir. This, uh, what, what was it we just mentioned? Uh, the, the, the thing we throw out here, it's. Uh, it, something is happening, <laughs> we are uh, somehow seem to be talking to each other, Talk, seem to be. Right. And at, in this talking, you are not participating in our logical games, uh -huh. okay? Knowledge games, knowledge games and logical games. And yet you talk, and yet you seem to be doing something, and our minds are being philosophers, nice spiel cobweb systems. So That's no why I am asking you, Dr. Narayan Murthy Garu. Yes. You write something about me, see, yeah. how you, where you can fit me. Your professor right. said, exactly. well, I can't put you in a, what is your name? Srinivas Rao. Rao said, you see, Chansekar pushed him, you say something. I can't put this fellow in any cage. So we let this bird fly. <laughs> That's the way out. Yeah, we have, we have tried out some more theories before we give up. We have plenty in our pocket. Yeah, I know that. The next know one that comes here. around and yeah. says, here, listen, you're not participating in our games. This is square number three or four <laughs> along the line. Uh, you're not participating in, the, in our games, but it's not completely nothing you're doing. You seem to be doing something. Could it be that uh, you're a skeptic who refuses, who only is interested in destroying uh, other people's constructs, but nothing, not interested in participating no. in the game. I think, all. I think even a skeptic has a motivation, you see, there, you see, just to achieve some result, you see, you know, it's, it's very easy for you, you see, to put a label on me, call me a skeptic, call me a nihilist, call me an atheist, you see. When I say that God is redundant, the creator is irrelevant, it does not mean that I am an atheist, you see, or the, the purpose, no place. We'll use your own words, sir, and put you in a pocket, I mean, a, a package like this. 
we'll do something like this. Here you see, this is a philosopher, I mean, I'm somebody, it's art of philosopher, who is uh, shooting down with some kind of energy, perhaps in language which people use, to destroy their sound. I'm not even good at that. You see, if you put them on paper, you will be surprised. Yeah, not one see, sentence is complete is, here. Yeah, the <laughs> problem with you is, as soon as we said that, you are something else. We can't put you even in your own cage, in other words. We have trouble. How, How do we resolve this problem? Yes, huh? yeah, purpose will be slipped. One purpose is, sir, we have had a very nice lunch here. <laughs> I mean, there seems to be some common ground of communication. We don't ask you your name and then you say, oh, it was That's a all nice that I can tell you, Vice. Even that is, I don't know why... Some appropriateness in the, in the responses that, that we get from you. Your, your responses are not completely unrelated to our questions. Is it? They are related. Listen, you say, no, 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 what, what I am emphasizing is a very simple thing. What? You see, you really don't have any questions. You only have answers. So you want me to indulge in this frivolity of a ritual-like thing and indulge in what is called question and answer meeting. You are asking questions for which you already have answers. You see, I am a village idiot, village bumpkin. I don't have any questions which you have. I did ask some questions because I was an idiot, you see. So yeah. I know that, you see, how come you have all these questions? Where do they come from? You already have the answers. You see, the problems you want to discuss. Huh? The, you have the solutions. Yeah. There is, I don't see any problem there. What is the problem I am asking you? The, I don't see any problem there. And you Good. have solutions. And no time you are ready to accept the hard reality that they are not the solutions for the problem. So you are going here, there and everywhere, finding out, you see, whether there is anybody who can offer me another solution. So in exactly the same way, you see, you want another answer for your question. Why you are not satisfied with all the answers you have? Why you are still asking the questions? You yeah. have the answer, so I don't want you see, to participate in this question and answer ritual. You see. So you're saying I have no answers at all for your questions. Do you I'm have any question of your own? Restructuring. Huh? Do you have, I have questions basic question, of your own? I have only basic what are your question, questions. Basic questions, food, clothing, shelter. Food, basic clothing, questions. Shelter. Where do I get, you see, my cow, brown cow yoga? That's all, you see. Okay, where can I buy yoga. that small cheap bag for a travel bag for me? Kmart. Are you? With all that you have, with your beauty, with your this, with your that, you say, are you happy? Well, we want I to don't know what happiness is like, you see, so I can't be unhappy. So you're describing your position in life, how you feel yourself related to life. No, no. You say, I'm unhappy? No, I'm, you see, and I'm I don't happy. know what happiness is like. See, people always see, throw this question at me, you must be very happy all the time. What is it that they are talking? I really don't know what happiness is, so I can never be unhappy. So, I know what gives that's you. That's your status. It's, it's not mine. I don't know and what is yours. Since I don't know my situation, how can I know about you yours? Him that he's not happy and you're not happy, you don't know happiness. How do you know that I don't know happiness? A happy man would never yeah. seek happiness. That's obvious. <laughs> it's for you. How can you? It's not a continuous state. It is. In order to that's exactly what I said. You want. You is interested in happiness without one moment of unhappiness. Yeah, right. I'm that is the quest. The that moment. is the search. And like Dr. Faust, you know, give me a perfect moment. I don't even look at flowers. So, <laughs> Dr. Faust. Uh, Eugene, yes, I sir. like you a lot, but uh, I wonder if this is a little bit of a showmanship pose that you're assuming. I think there is more depth in you than that. More depth in me than that? Do you see that? I don't see. <laughs> I have no way. <laughs> First of all, I, I'm he's not a showman. There's entertainment going on. This, yes, this has entertainment value. Entertainment. People seem to be enjoying themselves. So. Yeah, I don't know why. If, if it has served that purpose, uh, it's fine. It's not bad. <laughs> it's <laughs> fine. We'll collect fees <laughs> from your life. It's not to face. No coverage. You smile as you laugh. You have a great sense of humor. So Your so consul you asked want. me, you don't have anything nice to say about America. I read in the newspapers. So why you want to go to the United States? I said, you see, America is a la What can America offer me? And uh, then, why are you going? She said, you see, I'm going because America is a land of entertainment. I'm going to entertain myself and I have the means to entertain myself. If you say no, good luck. No, no, no. 
That, that worked the last couple of years, Eugene, but you're tired of TV, you don't go to movies anymore. There's something no, else. No, 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 still your there. commercials are oh, very commercial interesting. Thing. You don't want to. <laughs> That's the only thing that I enjoy here. I'm taping all those commercials. You'll be surprised, the Indian little children, you know, is it five years old, six year old children, you see they are enjoying all these commercials there. The jingles. <laughs> Yeah. Bad, 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 you see, it's become, everybody is singing there. <laughs> if life is so meaningless, why not enjoy the little things of it, you know? I can't say that I can do my life. You see, listen, true. when we talk of life, we are talking of our living. It's, it's see, you don't, yeah. we don't talk about life, we life really don't know. Our living doesn't seem to have any meaning. That's why we are asking the question, mm -hmm. Has life any purpose? Has life any meaning? You see, once a 95-year-old man in Bangalore came to see me, he asked him this question, has life any purpose, any meaning? He said, Dave, what are you talking You have lived 95 years, you haven't found the meaning or purpose of life. In 95 years, why are you asking me that question? Obviously, you haven't found the meaning. There may not be any meaning, you see, except to go on asking the question. By the time you get the answer, if there is an answer, you will have been dead, you see. You know? huh? So then he asked me the next question, you see, I have lived 95 years of my life, I have written books on spirituality, published them, everybody has read, you see, and they have not helped me, you see. I have written books on the question of death, even. He is still alive, I think, 105 or something like that. Mm. And he asked me a question, what will happen to me when I am dead? So you are the only one that can answer the question. I said, you see, look here, you have lived 95 years. You may not have many more years to live. You will find out when you are dead. Why would I give the answer? It's not a clever answer. There is no use of my telling him that there is no such thing as death, that there is no such thing as reincarnation. So tell me, what is there now while you are living? Why are you concerned about reincarnation? If you want to know death, the answer to your question, what is death? Is there anything after death? You have to die now. At this moment, then only you will get the answer. No matter what I say, is of no importance to you. It is not such a burning question for you. By the fear of coming to an end, the fear of what coming to an end, the fear of what you know coming to an end, that's all that you are concerned about. No. So we are not, there, there's no such thing as the fear of the unknown. You do not want uh, the fear to come to an end. You love fear. All these therapeutic cults can exploit you and tell you to be with fear, be choicelessly aware of fear, one with fear, that, this and the other. But the fact of the matter is that you don't want it to be free from fear because the end of the fear is the end of you. You don't want such a thing to happen while you are enjoying your fear. Enjoy your fear and love your fear. And what and do you feel about it? About what fear. do you feel? About fear. You have huh? no fear? Physical fear, yes, I have physical so, fear. So you do have fear. Physical fear, yeah. and it doesn't last long. There is no reason for me to go into the question of fear. By the time you so see, you, you are know degree, that you are... You are a degree of fear like the rest of us. Not degree, degree totally. No, you have a degree of fear. Not, you are introducing degree. Of, you are introducing degree. I am not introducing degree at all. Well, you it's say because the fear, no fear no, listen, listen, the listen. The, it is the fear is. that is fear. it is the He's fear saying. is necessary yeah. for this to protect right. itself. Right. So if you see a cobra, it steps back, That's right. and then from that moment on, this and the cobra take a walk and sing mm -hmm. songs together. But you can't do that; you run away. So you cannot do me any harm. To the fear that you sure. don't give. Yeah. Our thinking process gives a continuity to the fear yes, that the, you don't. The, the, the cobra smells the the, the smells yeah. that you emanate. You see your fear, so it has to take the first step and not let you use your thinking and then use the weapons that you have at your disposal to kill them. You are not killing one snake; you are killing millions of snakes. You see, you don't seem to understand one thing. Any event that occurs here is affecting the whole thing. It's not an isolated event, you see, at any time, at any given time. But you say we don't understand that. I, I knew that before you. I came here. I don't understand so you, either. <laughs> how it is so you can't do just one thing then? We I want to understand, that's the problem. You we want, want to, to make understand? a system out of whatever I you don't say. know. Well, how the hell you are, you see, because, because you are asking the questions, you are throwing all those questions and responding, this is, that's all. It's, but it's the only reason to be here is to like you, but I won't be here if I didn't have 
wanted to ask questions. You can you go ask me to questions. ask to ask questions. Anyway. Yeah. So thank you, sir. <laughs> How long? You have enough mid. <laughs> you still have questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not very interested in making a system out of everything. It's just a, a matter of uh, survival. Tell me what have I said all this one and a half hours in one word. I'm not your teacher. I'm asking you. <laughs>